Welcome to Cloud Security Basics, a series where we explain the ins and outs of securing your application on Google Cloud. Sound fun? Then stick around, because in this episode, you'll learn about cloud audit logging. Salutations, Cloud Detective. Last episode, you used service accounts to foil my grand attempt to compromise your apps and scripts that allow for automated access into your system. This time, I decided to go old school. One of your employees is logging in in the middle of the night and accessing things they shouldn't be. How do I know this? Well, maybe it's because you're not their only employer. The question is, in a fully remote workplace, how are you ever going to track down who the wayward employee is? If you don't do something soon, I just might have to ask our mutual employee to make some unfortunate changes to a slideshow. How embarrassing would it be if all of your images were replaced with cats at the next company-wide presentation? All right, so here's what we know. Admins are responsible for coming up with solutions to the many ways users can interact with their systems. And in this case, we need to track down who's accessing files when they shouldn't be. If this was at the office, we could ask the security guards to walk around and note if they see anything suspicious. And if we were at the office, we would actually be able to look at the security logs to see whose key card was being used to access the building late at night. Wait a minute, that gives me an idea. See, Google Cloud provides a lot of tools and services to protect its users from cases just like this. And one of the most important tools is called Google Cloud Audit Logs, which lets teams easily create and manage audit logs. Regardless of how carefully we code or thoroughly we debug a piece of software, problems are gonna come up. And when they do, it's almost impossible to determine why they happened and figure out how to fix them unless there's a trail of breadcrumbs to follow along the way. And security logging provides that crucial trail of evidence. So during an active investigation or post-mortem analysis, having regular logs to go through is critical to identify the cause of the issue. They help establish baselines and find operational trends. Logging security events that keep track of every activity that happens in the digital environment, your organization will monitor these logs for any suspicious activity or unauthorized access to the system. Whenever these breaches are found, the data is moved to a central database so that the security team can then investigate them. Hmm. I need to investigate this more. When it comes to Google's cloud audit logs, some types of logs, like admin activity logs, are on by default and can't be disabled. Others, like data access logs, are optional, off by default, and cost money to use. Logs that are not essential are turned off by default to save users money because the logs could take up a large amount of data that would apply against Google's quotas and limits. But depending on what you need, Cloud audit logs provide many customization options to suit an organization and fulfill all their security logging needs. So these include the aforementioned admin activity audit logs, which cover API calls and admin actions that modify how metadata for resources is configured. Whenever VM instances are created or identities are changed, a log record is kept. These logs are automatically kept, don't cost users anything, and can't be disabled. Then there's data access audit logs, which keep track of users as they create, change, and read data that's been user provided. These do have costs associated with them, except for BigQuery's data access audit logs. And data access audit logs aren't on by default because they can store a lot of data. And then there's system event audit logs to track changes to how resources are configured. These logs are triggered by Google systems, don't cost anything, and can't be disabled. And 
finally, there's policy denied audit logs. Those are created whenever a Google Cloud service denies access to a user or service account because of a security policy violation. These are on by default, but do have costs associated with them. So we've got a lot of log information to sort through, but it's important to understand that audit logs have no concept of suspicious events and are often best effort items that can be delayed by up to five minutes. And still, once your security team is aware of a suspicious event, your team will need to have the correct tools and data to work with to assess the situation and take action as appropriate. And luckily, in our case, we'd turned on data access logs. So let's look at those and see who's been calling what and when. And by taking a look at who's been accessing files they shouldn't have, Eureka! I was able to figure out who's been accessing files they shouldn't. Drats, you figured that out so quickly. Although it does make me wonder why a regular scan of activity wasn't already part of your process. Google Cloud has tools that allow you to set up real-time alerts and notifications. And regardless of if you use those or not, your company should implement an audit process that involves regularly reviewing the logs for suspicious behavior. So there you have it, another episode of Cloud Security Basics. Next episode, we'll be looking into this so-called security breach. So stay tuned for the rest of the Cloud Security Basics series, because when it comes to security, you can't let bad actors win.